So th this uh, my presentation is uh, connected with a project uh, called GeoHarmonizer, which is uh, under the Open Data Science that EU. Um, and this project is uh, co-financed by the European uh, uh, Connecting Europe facility of the European Union. Um, yes, I will talk about how we made basically how we made an ensemble um, terrain model for Europe at 30 meter resolution. Um, so as I mentioned, that's part of the Open Data Science EU project. Uh, the project, uh, the idea of the project is to uh, develop tools to harmonize existing data and produce and distribute uh, an environmental data cube for continental EU, more or less in a nutshell. Um, and also as objective two, we are looking at using state-of-the-art machine learning, including a special temporal data analysis methods. Um, and we have produced overly um, uh, lots of data sets and they're available through uh, Open Data Science Europe Viewer, which I will show in a demo after. Uh, so one of the one of the environmental layers that we focused on um, uh, was the terrain and uh, basically land surface models and all the terrain derivatives. Um, and this data is uh, made uh, publicly available already. It has a DOI, and the whole processing, uh, including all the uh, regression matrix for training, it's available on this uh, Zenodo uh, Zenodo repository. Uh, as you see, people have been downloading it. Uh, we published it the last September. Um, so, so when you look at the, for example, you, you, if you need a, to build a terrain model today, uh, so when you look, when you start looking, um, the first thing you see, okay, there's some existing data, and we're talking about, we were looking at open data sets. Uh, so there is the existing data, which is EU DEM, and I think Peter Strobel already mentioned that this is a bit outdated now. Um, and now there's a, glue, a new couple of new uh, uh, digital elevation, digital surface models uh, ever since the 2009, 2020. So we all know there's the ALOS uh, AW3D and there's the GLO30. So these are the new state of the art. Uh, uh, they are both digital surface models actually. And also what's nice that the um, University of Maryland uh, re uh, released the global canopy height based on JD data and some also some machine learning. Uh, and also that's very interesting for mapping terrain. The previous uh, global DMs is the Mary DM and SFTM DM, but SFTM DM almost also, I highly recommend uh, slowly uh, stopping using it because uh, there's an, uh, now a lot of new data and really it's becoming redundant and outdated data set. Um, so this thing I'm, um, I was talking about the GLOW 30, uh, there is also on the uh, geomorphometer talk, there's a, a article explains how to access it. This is, I think, uh, uh, Peter Good mentioned that as the, um, um, the winner, let's say the winner, uh, uh, so the most uh, detailed, most up-to-date global uh, elevation data set, and you can access it also through Amazon AWS, so, so it's uh, very easy to access also. Um, otherwise, you have to download through this uh, SDS, SDS data. Uh, so there's a um, um, uh, where you have to register, etc. So it's nice to see that it's on Amazon. Uh, but but it is both the when you download and when you use the the Glow 30 and AW3D uh, 30, you can see that these are surface models. Here you can see clearly if you derive standard deviation uh, between multiple DMs, you can see that uh, you can see the forest patches. So these are the forest patches. You wouldn't see them in the original elevations, but as you derive some something simple like a standard deviation, you can see the forest. Uh, so the canopy is kind of um, embedded in the elevation model. Um, uh, so what uh, uh, several people publish uh, work on this, and um, I, I think uh, Peter was presenting in the morning. Uh, and uh, Peter mentioned, I think, some Copernicus winds. Um, so, um, so it looks like that in based on their research, they concluded that the Copernicus the, is the next generation SFTM, basically. So the most, uh, let's say, most accurate uh, global DM. Uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, and then also what's very interesting, this uh, work by uh, Julia Wagemann, uh, recently published um, in Computers and Geosciences, where they analyzed the uh, challenges to related to finding, accessing, and interoperating bigger data. And as you see, the top four uh, is the uh, in top four you have too many data platforms and portals, uh, and then also growing data volume um, and limiting processing capacity. So these are kind of the uh, top responses by uh, many um, uh, many interviewees. 
Um, and so that also when when we look now at Europe, there's so much data, the terrain data, um, and you go like, okay, which one do I use? I mean, I have the GLOW, I have the uh, AW3D, I have the MERIDM, I have an EUDM. So there's about five or six data sets. And now people are getting more and more increasingly um, basically um, challenged by that, that there's uh, so, so many options. Um, and so what we looked at, uh, we looked at making an ensemble model and, um, and thanks to now also these two missions, the ISAT and the JED mission, uh, we downloaded all the point data for actually for whole world we downloaded all the data and we use from the jetty we use the the level 2b points there's the a column called lf lowest mode which is the height of terrain and also in the isa 2 there in the atl 08 uh, there's a, a column called h uh, terrain uh, elevation mean so that's a, a smoothed terrain elevation so they're kind of the same thing we just estimated through jetty and through um isa2 and um and so this is a, for example uh jedi for europe uh what uh, also peter says you had you have these scanning lines and so there's a lot of gaps lots of missing uh, areas and also jedi stops at some 60 degrees um uh, so it stops even less 56 degrees i think uh north it stops and, uh, and so what we did we combined the jedi and isa2 uh, we combined the data and we put it together and, and then you overlay the data uh, versus the uh, different covariates. So we extract about 9 million points. Uh, we clean up the points. There was some also um, like um, outliers and looks like artifacts. So we clean up the points and then we overlay uh, versus uh, um, four DM sources. Then, uh, then we had also canopy height, bare earth probability, surface water probability. So we had a couple of layers. Uh, and we overlaid, and then we did ensemble machine learning like, as implemented in the MLR package. And uh, also before we uh, before we uh, run the training, we also corrected the uh, the altitude, so the elevation, using the EGM 2008, um, so that all the elevations are expressed uh, in reference to the uh, to the EGM 2008. Um, and then after after the predictions, uh, we run a kernel smoother because there's still noise in the predictions, and uh, and that was the DM that we produced on the end. Uh, so if you remember, the uh, Peter says the Peter Good said in his paper that the uh, the Copernicus Glow 30 is the winner. Uh, surprisingly, we got actually that the merit DM, the version zero point, the version one point zero one. Uh, it comes as the most correlated uh, with the uh, with the ISA2 and uh, JEDI points. Uh, and if we just do a linear, so this is just a linear model, just a very simple linear model. Um, we can see that the standard error is about seven meter. So that's the mean mean error if you do cross validation. Um, then if we do ensemble machine learning, uh, we we reduce that error for to six point five meter. Um, and also these uh, residuals, you know, there are some residuals still like up to 180 meters. So that will be just like a one, one point, but uh, most of the residuals are between one and two meter. So minus one plus two meter, um, and which is quite okay, uh, which is a quite okay result. As you see, the R square is like 0 0.9996, but this is to expect because the, the match is, uh, uh, how did we compute that? Well, we had to use a high performance computing environment. Uh, usually we load everything in R and we run all the modeling and uh, prediction in R and um, it can be done within 24 hours we produce the, the prediction. So it's a bit more computational using ensemble machine learning, but if you parallelize everything and if you use uh, servers with like 400 gigabyte RAM, uh, it's possible to compute. Um, and so this is the result. So we are very proud. Uh, this was, I think, what you see is the, the GLOW 30. Uh, this is the area actually where I come from in Croatia. I know this area very well, and uh, I did the field work there. And so what you see here is just an um, uh, uh, enhanced uh, legend uh, where we see these patches. Uh, we see these patches of uh, forest. And so when we computed this uh, ensemble model, you can see these patches disappear. Um, and so basically this ensemble uh, allow us to uh, remove that automatically without doing any filtering uh, just by using the canopy height surface water probability and 
all these layers, uh, it helps us. But there are still some problems. There will still be visible some uh, areas where uh, the models, they can over predict, under predict uh, elevation. So, uh, so there's still some problems. Um, and so our result actually showed that the Merrick DM is the most correlated and it looks like it's the most important uh, in this case. Uh, and that's because the Yamazaki et al, uh, I don't know if they're following this conference, but they did fantastic work. They did fantastic work. They, uh, they really cleaned up the, uh, all the problems and they, will, they really produced a DM, which is closest to the terrain model. So you get the land surface height. Um, then the second one is actually AW3D and GLOW30 comes uh, uh, third. Um, and, uh, and we got this uh, errors uh, for the two thirds of pixels, we got an error of plus minus one to two meter. Um, and for each pixel, uh, we provide also estimate of the prediction error. So I'm going to show you now how this looks like. So this is this uh, Euro, uh, open uh, data science Europe Euro. Um, and I can uh, zoom in somewhere. And the first thing I could uh, uh, turn on is just a, a digital elevation model. So let's go to Perugia. Um, so here's the Perugia and we can zoom in here. So now we just see these uh, uh, elevations that uh, we estimated using this ensemble technique. Uh, you don't see much, of course, I, I have to turn on uh, something uh, like a, some terrain parameter um, so now we can see basically terrain and pops up here. Uh, but what I said is that uh, for this uh, elevation, we have also uncertainty map. So you see for every pixel, we estimate what is the uh, uh, propagated uncertainty. And in many cases, what happens is the, the, the worst uncertainty is the, so the, as the color get redder and redder, the uncertainty goes up to 10 meter. This is all by the way in decimeter. So you have to divide by 10 to get meters. So you see most of pixels are like a one meter accuracy, but there will be uh, red pixels. And uh, usually the uncertainty of the elevations is uh, uh, highly correlated with the uh, complexity and the slope of terrain. And this happens with, um, with many projects. I think it's been proven that it uh, uh, matches. Um, then from this, we derive the slope map uh, for Europe all in 30 meters. We also have the valley bottom flatness um, so you can see where the planes and where's the, uh, and also this topographic index. And in this viewer, you can also a bit play with that uh, elevation. So we can turn on the, for example, either NASA whirlwind, or you can turn cesium. Uh, as we turn cesium, then we can see that terrain um, um, rendering. So this show us, um, uh, we can see the, as long as my internet allows me, um, it, sh uh, it will show the 3D rendering. So yeah, it's coming. Um, so that's um, that's about the viewer and uh, that's about the viewer and uh, the effects of uh, modeling and the errors that you get with um, uh, using ensemble machine learning. Uh, going back to my slides. Uh, so yes, if you do uh, modeling, uh, machine learning is very sensitive to blunders. Uh, so the first uh, two months we really suffered because. Uh, we had, you see this individual points sticking out and then the error is like um, almost, uh, it can be like 500 meter or something. Um, and so these uh, little uh, uh, points that uh, sticked out, they created a lot of problems. And, and usually we can detect that there's a problem with, uh, with a missing value or with some typo. Uh, and then we filter, the, uh, we filter this. It's about maybe 0.5% of points or even less 0.2% of points. Uh, they need to be filtered. And then uh, when you rerun the analysis, then you get these models we got. Um, and as I show you in this view, you can see, you can also look at that the uh, terrain model matches, uh, let's say the contour lines, if you use the open topo map. So you can see that it matches the contour lines and, and it matches basically background data. Um, so general conclusions, um, the uh, GLOW30 and uh, AW3D they are really uh, next generation uh, global data elevation data sets, uh, but they're both surface models. So um, as I showed you visually, they need to be uh, processed to create a terrain model. And we think of a, one uh, robust way to do that is to use a combination of ISA2 and JEDI. As long as you bring them to the same vertical reference, then they can be used in ensemble machine learning framework. 
And in our result, we got uh, plus minus one or two meters for two thirds of pixels. Um, and the rest of the area, we have high errors, and these errors usually correlated with the uh, slope and canopy and terrain complexity. Um, and uh, also, uh, congratulations to the author of the Mary DM. Uh, their, uh, their DM is the winner. So, um, unlike what uh, Peter Good wrote, uh, we actually got that the Mary DM is a winner, but the Mary DM is 100 meter only. So it, it kind of it's uh, it adds value and it's useful, but you get the level of detail you get from the GLOW 30 and AW3D. Um, also, I would like to take very, very much to Peter Good, Peter Strobel and Hannes Reuter uh, for helping me obtaining all the data. And um, they, they also published this video. I recommend watching about the, the, the DEMIX, the, the uh, DM intercomparison experiment. Uh, so, uh, but I wouldn't be able to finish. We wouldn't have been able to finish all this if they didn't help us. I just send emails. And then first, uh, but Peter Good helped me uh, correct the, uh, the vertical reference. So he gave me this uh, geoid correction. Uh, and then Peter Strobel helped me obtain the GLOW 30 and get the right copy and also do the right interpretation. So I'm very grateful for them. Uh, next steps, let's make together uh, one ensemble estimate of the global terrain. I think we should all just make a one data set jointly. Uh, and I think we should do it per continent. Uh, and so we can use uh, for different continents, we can use all the local data, like for, for US and Canada, there's extra data. For Europe, there's extra data. Uh, and we offer to host it on the openlandmap.org. Um, and we also, we can compute it. We have enough computing resources. Um, we just need somebody to approve the, let's say the method and to basically the DISC, uh, International Society for Geomorphometry that somebody approves it as a, a way to go. Um, and with this, uh, I'm finishing my talk. I'm open to questions and we are preparing a publication um, but uh, unfortunately, my busy agenda is now limiting me with possible publications, but it will come. We will put this, all this processing in the publication. And uh, yes, I'm open to questions if there are any.